I've got a little screen printing quick tip for you guys today, but first, give me that intro. So if you work with an entry level manual screen printing press or even something in the upper mid tier range like I have behind me, one of the most difficult and time consuming things to pull off is the full front, full back style print. We're talking prints way larger than what I'm wearing right now. Things that are 15, 16, even 17 inches tall that'll cover the full front or most of the back of a shirt. And that is because of our smaller palette size. They all kind of vary in size from setup to setup, but it seems like the ballpark range they all land in is around 16 inches wide by 18 inches tall. Now things like automated presses or higher end manual presses have much larger palettes on them, so they can pull off these large front, large back prints, no problem all day long, and they don't really have to worry about it. But with us, we have a little bit extra work to do. And that's because with a typical style print, we would normally just line up our screen with our two inch down, three inch down, four inch down reference mark, wherever you're at, load the shirt on, and away you go. But with these larger sized prints, let's say a 16 inch tall print, for example, if we line it up to our three inch down from the collar reference mark here, our print would be ending past the palette, which obviously isn't gonna work out too well. So what we have to do is scooch that print upwards and center it on the palette, and then have to overhang the shirt in order to get it to print in the spot that it's supposed to print at. Now, of course, you could go the route of buying larger palettes, but a lot of these presses aren't designed to accept larger palettes, so it's not even an option. But if it is an option, you know, it's a very expensive undertaking to do. There's gonna be anywhere from four to six, eight of these things on your press, so that's expensive enough as it is. And then you're gonna have to go ahead and replace all of your screens to larger size screens. It's, it's a lot of money, so for us, it's not even something that crosses our mind. Which means in order to do these size of prints, you have two options. The first one being, you just tell people no, you don't do them, which I can't believe is an option for some people, but I've heard of it happening a lot. And I kind of get it because I know it's a lot more time consuming to do them, and the probability of having a crooked print is a lot higher, so I get it, but there's no excuse, you should do it if you can. And the second and actual way to do this would be to load the shirt as you normally would and then grab it and pull it back and overhang it off the palette a few inches. This is the way that most people do this and it does get the job done, but I found one really big flaw in it that I didn't like and figured I would improve upon. When you load the shirt on and pull back, you really don't know how far off this collar is coming from the edge of the palette. So your print could end up being three inches down from the collar, four inches down from the collar, one inch down from the collar. It's a guessing game. I don't care how long you've been doing this for, how many shirts you've loaded in your lifetime, you're not hitting the same spot every single time. You are definitely gonna be half inch to one inch out with every single shirt, and that's just not acceptable. To some people that is because they're all about speed in the bottom line, to me, it is not. We're all about quality in this place and getting the best product possible to our customer, and hopefully you are too. And if you are, luckily for you, I've figured out two solutions to this problem that's gonna get you within an eighth of an inch or under every single time, and that is some glorious accuracy when it comes to something like this. So the first thing you wanna do is line up your image somewhere on the pad palette to where you're not gonna slide off the edge and not print the whole thing. What I have here today is a 15 inch tall print. It's going on the back of a shirt and I wanna line this thing up three inches down from the neckline. So since I have 18 inch tall palettes, I couldn't line it up to my three inch down reference mark because that would cover this whole bit of real estate here and that print would probably fall off the edge. So what I did was line this thing up to the two inch down reference mark to give myself a one inch buffer zone at the end of the palette and be able to print this whole design and then we go and do our little trick from here. So I've come up with two ways to go about this so that everyone watching this can do it. The first is a very low tech way and the other is kind of a high tech way. That's still kind of low tech actually, it's got cardboard and tape, but it has lasers, damn it. Let's knock out the low tech way first and that is to go get yourself one of these bad boys. This is just a chalk pencil that you can find at any fabric store for like a dollar. These are used by tailors and dressmakers and whatnot to make huge marks on fabric that they don't want being permanent. And that's exactly how we're gonna use it. We're gonna make reference marks on our t-shirts to line up our print. As you saw, I set up my print two inches down from the edge of the palette, but we wanna go three inches down from the neckline, meaning we have to overhang this shirt one inch past the edge. So all we're gonna do is just take our ruler, go down to our neckline here, and just give ourselves a little one inch reference mark somewhere here. Then we're just gonna load our shirt as we normally would, and then pull back until we see that mark hit the edge of the palette. Then we know we're one inch off the edge here. Good to go, print it. Then when it comes out of the dryer, just take your finger and wipe that little mark off. Good to go. Woo! How about this design, by the way? I think we designed the coolest carpentry logo of all time. Look at that thing. 
kidding me? Obviously, this is gonna make your job a bit more time consuming, but your prints are gonna be way more accurate and your customer is gonna be way happier with their product and that's what really matters in the end. Plus, this is the one way of doing it that I came up with that's totally accessible to everybody watching this right now. But now let's show you my way of doing it. Now, the way that I do this is awesome. It's a one-time setup, it's super quick for production, and it involves Frickin' lasers. Frickin' laser beam. Now this is a laser made by Ryonet specifically for this press. It's linked down below if you wanna check it out. But if you wanna DIY something, I know you can get these little lasers and get a battery pack, make something yourself, whatever. One way or another, you need a laser to pull off this method. So the first thing you wanna do is grab yourself a piece of cardboard, a ruler, and a marker. What we're gonna do first is just give ourselves a mark to reference our palette edge. And then from that edge, we're gonna measure out one inch increments. So let's give ourselves one, two, three, so that we can use this template for further setups and have multiple options. Next, we're gonna take this piece of cardboard and tape it up to our palette real quick. Now I'm gonna take my laser and line it up to one of my reference marks. And what I need is that one inch off the palette edge mark. So we're gonna line it up to that one. Now I can take this template off and this is where the magic happens. Now when I load a shirt onto this thing, when I pull back, all I gotta do is pull it back until those crosshairs of that laser hit the reference point on the shirt that I want, and I'm golden. It's super quick, dead on accurate, and repeatable as hell, which is the most important thing. Excuse me while I print this real quick. And there you have it. Those are two easy ways that you can use up all the real estate on your pallets to get yourself big ass prints. Now I'm not sure if this is something that I came up with first or not, so I'm definitely not gonna claim it. I just know that I've never seen it before and it popped into my head one day and it worked and I figured I would pass it along to you guys because it's something that is a staple in my workflow now and definitely helps out a lot. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out. Let me know down below if it did. I've definitely got a whole bunch more of these like tutorials and quick tip videos that I'm working on right now. I'm gonna maybe have to come up with some kind of little series title for these tips. <laughs> We'll call it Just the Tip with Lee Stewart. Story of my life. Anyways, drop me a thumbs up on this thing. Show some love. Pick up some merch from 38 Ride Co. Link in the description. We'll see you again in the next one.